Welcome, and thank you everyone for joining us for our second virtual Salmon Way gathering. Um, the song that was playing uh, when you joined is called Salmon by Alaska musician Emma Hill. And you can learn more about Emma and her music at emmahillmusic.com. My name is Elizabeth Herendine, and I'm joining you from Klingit Ani, the traditional lands of the Klingit people, where I live and work in Juneau, Alaska for Salmon State. And Salmon State's an Alaska-based conservation organization, and we work to ensure that Alaska remains a place where wild salmon and the people who depend on them thrive. And you can learn more about our work at salmonstate.org. I just want to give a quick thank you to Braided River. Um, they really made this event possible and are providing a lot of the back end support um, for this virtual gathering. So thanks to them and their team. And thanks also to our community partners that you saw in one of the opening slides. And um, thanks to them for helping get the word out and their general support for Alaska's wild salmon. So last month, some of you may have been with us on August 10th when we gathered virtually to celebrate Alaska Wild Salmon Day. And we decided to keep the celebration going um, since wild salmon are such an integral part of our lives and communities, economy, ecosystem, and cultures here in Alaska. Uh, and wild salmon also help us stay connected to each other um, no matter where we live. And that just feels especially important these days. So we're really honored to be here again with you all. And we're especially honored to have award-winning photographer and author, Amy Gulick, with us again today. And she's gonna be sharing more of her stories and photos from her newest book, The Salmon Way, An Alaska State of Mind. And if you're not familiar with Amy and her work, she's the author of Salmon in the Trees. And her work has been featured in numerous publications, including Outdoor Photographer, Audubon, and Sierra. And today we're exploring the theme of home. Um, the name of today's episode is The Way Home, and that's the name of the chapter we'll be digging into together. And Amy's going to take us to the home of Michelle Ravenmoon out in Bristol Bay. And Michelle will be joining Amy for a conversation about what home means to her and share her salmon way of life out in Lake Ileana. And we'll also get to see some of Michelle's art, which is not only inspired by wild salmon, but is also made of wild salmon towards the end of our, our time together. Um, and now before we hear from Amy and Michelle, I invite you all to type into the chat, where is your home stream? Um, and please also include the state or the country where that home stream is located. And this can be where you live, where you work, where you fish, or maybe where you play. It could be a river or stream that you've never been to, but inspires you and resonates with you in some way. So there's no wrong answer, but we encourage you to type in the chat what do you consider to be your home stream? And I'll kick it off by saying that my home stream is the Taku River. It's a transboundary river here in Southeast Alaska. Um, and the Taku helps keep my freezer full of wild salmon. And it also fills my soul with awe and gratitude. Um, so with that, just some quick housekeeping before we get going. Um, at the end of our program around 1230, we're gonna be doing a quick raffle with a few fun prizes. Um, for those of you who pre-registered to attend. So stick around for that. And also due to our um, limited time, we're not gonna be able to get into questions today, but we do encourage you to use the chat, share any questions you have, any thoughts um, or reflections throughout the program. And we'll be happy to follow, follow up with you afterwards um, and get you any answers to your questions then. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Amy. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. And hi, everyone, and thank all of you for being here today. Um, I'm the author and photographer of uh, The Salmon Way, an Alaska state of mind. I'd like to uh, acknowledge and thank the Snohomish and Coast Salish for stewarding their current and traditional homelands, where I make my home uh, in Washington State's Salish Sea. I'd also like to thank the salmon for bringing us all together today. So I am going to get right into this, share my screen and share some stories with all of you. So why did I pursue uh, making my book, uh, The Salmon Way? Well, I've always been intrigued 
uh, that Alaska is still a place where the lives of pe and where people, the lives of people and salmon are linked. And I wanted to know what the lives uh, of people are like who have relationships with these remarkable fish. So I traveled for several years uh, throughout the salmon state. I went to uh, the rainforest of Southeast Alaska, uh, to Bristol Bay, uh, fed by nine major rivers, to the immense Yukon Kuskokwim region, to the Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, the interior, and other places. So of the 20,000 streams, rivers, and lakes where you can find salmon in Alaska, where is my home stream? Wherever wild salmon are. That's where I'm inspired, and that's where my heart is. So as Elizabeth said, please share your home stream uh, in the chat with all of us so, so we can see. So throughout my travels, I showed up at the homes, boats, and fish camps of complete strangers. Salmon brought us together and, and helped us speak uh, a common language. I left with a better understanding of the very diverse ways of life uh, that salmon allow people to live. I also left with salmon in my hands and lasting friendships. I asked everyone I met the same question. What is your relationship with salmon? And I learned that it didn't really matter if the people I asked the question to fish for their food, for their livelihood, or for fun, everyone gave me the same answers. Family, community, culture, well-being, connection to a home stream, and a valued way of life. And so I made my book to celebrate that Alaska is still a place where the salmon way is a way of life and to share the remarkable stories of the salmon people whose lives pulse with the beauty and mystery of their home streams. Joining me today is Michelle Ravenmoon, who shared her home, heart, home stream, and salmon way of life with me. Very grateful uh, that Michelle allowed me to share her story in the book with all of you. Now, before we hear from Michelle, uh, I'd like to give you a little glimpse uh, into her way of life by reading a passage from an essay in the book entitled, uh, The Way Home. The narrow creek is twisty, so tight that sometimes my kayak bounces off the banks like a pinball. Walls of grass block any sense of the greater surroundings. I come to a fork in this watery maze and I don't know which way to turn, but the salmon know. They pass me right and left as well as under the kayak and the motion of hundreds of fish beneath the surface creates a silent wave. I follow and turn left. Ahead of me, I catch up uh, to Michelle Ravenmoon who's showing me Nick G Creek, which flows into Iliamna Lake just steps from her front door. Can you hear them? Asked Michelle. I'm not sure what she's asking me is I don't hear anything but the ambient sound of wild country. The salmon, she says upon seeing my puzzled face, you can hear them. Other than the occasional splash of water made by a spooked fish or the hollow thunk when one torpedoes my kayak, I don't know what other sounds a salmon can make. I listen hard, nothing. Another wave of salmon passes by and then I hear it, a faint rumble just beneath the calm surface of the creek, a rolling thunder of fish passing over the gravel bottom, the swish of fins and tails like the whoosh of feathers made by a flock of birds. The strange thing is that I'm able to hear these underwater sounds from above the surface, but only because Michelle helped me hear my heartbeat in the quiet of the creek. So Michelle grew up here on her family's homestead, uh, named for her paternal grandparents. Uh, Pope Vinoy Landing is located in island-filled intricate bay on the largest lake in Alaska. It's home to six or so full-time family residents, um, but Pope Vinoy can swell to two or three times that number during salmon season. Uh, there are no roads here and thus no cars. The village of Kakanak with 170 residents is the nearest population center. It's 15 miles uh, by boat in summer and snow machine in winter. The city of Anchorage, some 200 miles away is reached by a small plane if the weather cooperates. The only store in Kakanak sells boxed milk for $27 a gallon and mostly dry goods. So Michelle obtains the bulk of her food in the wild by fishing for salmon, hunting moose and birds, and gathering berries and plants. She raises chickens and grows potatoes, carrots, onions, and an impressive assortment of greens in her garden. Flowers line pathways around her home and hang in sparkling glass jars from the branches of spruce trees. To an outsider like me, it's idyllic, a purposeful, simple life. But simple is in the eye of the beholder. There's no indoor plumbing in Michelle's two-room house. Drinking water is hauled from a spring. Wash water is collected in rain barrels. The toilet is outside. 
Bathing happens in an outbuilding with a propane fired shower in the summer months and a wood fired steam bath the rest of the year. A generator runs several hours a day to power freezers, computers, and phones. A satellite connection accesses the internet. Heat is a stove fired by wood gathered and split by hand. It's not an easy life, but it's the one that Michelle chose. After leaving home for nearly a decade to attend college and then work for the National Park Service, she returned to the mouth of Nick G. Creek, just like the salmon do every year. The house was empty, her family dispersed, but she was determined to make it home again. And she's, she tells me, what I imagined as a young person was that I would go to college, get a job and live the American dream of a house, car, marriage and career. And I did all that. But sitting in an office all day was unnatural to my body, to my spirit. I wanted to be outside, putting up fish, picking berries, and doing the things I would normally be doing. I loved my job and the people I worked with, but I felt like a wounded soul who needed to go home. The greatest healer in the world is being outdoors, living close with the land. My native people are not too far removed from living this way. Respecting and being part of where we're from is so important to our well being and our true spirit. Michelle's mother is Dena Anna Athabaskan from the village of Non Dalton on the New Halen River, a tributary of Lake Iliamna. Her father, a white man from Ohio and German ancestry, came to Alaska as a teenager. Michelle's the oldest of four children and with another nine half brothers and sisters. Living closely with the land is how Michelle's ancestors and other Alaska natives endured for thousands of years. Salmon were and continue to be essential to this way of life. So let's all give a warm welcome to Michelle Ravenmoon. So Michelle, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> that was such a nice introduction. <laughs> Um, so, Michelle, where you live uh, on Lake Iliamna, it's, it's part of the immense uh, Bristol Bay watershed in Alaska. It's home to the largest sockeye salmon fishery in the world. Um, so where's your home stream and how do the salmon connect you to the land, your family uh, and your ancestors? Well, um, I am part of the, the Quijack watershed and I, you know, as I feel like I'm part of that, but I, I'm so close to the creek that you had talked about, Nick G Creek, um, that I feel like that really is my home stream that I've, uh, <clears throat> I grew up there and it was, you know, I'm so connected there. I, I think I told you once about how I felt um, being connected to my ancestors is um, this, this idea of that, you know, my my parents, my father, my, I mean, my father, my grandparents are buried there and um, siblings as well um, are buried at Potfinoy overlooking Nikji Creek. And then the salmon come back every year and they come to the, the creek and they, they as well die there. And I, I think about that connection of um, both of our ancestors live there um, and very connected and how um, really we, we are, we are just, we are one. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so for people who maybe aren't familiar with your traditional, very rich way of life, which is sometimes referred to as subsistence, um, could you tell us why salmon are so important to you? Well, not only have they sustained my ancestors for thousands of years, they continue to sustain my people. Um, they're very important as a, um, a food source, but also um, and everything that we have um, um, out where I, you know, in, in our area, that's just everything is fertilized and connected to the salmon. I often in the wintertime, I, I cut um, cottonwood branches or different types of trees to, um, to use in the steam bath as um, dahe switches. And uh, in the middle of winter, I've, you soak the leaves and then you splash and you um, use them on your body and I can smell salmon in the <laughs> in the leaves um, as I do that so I, salmon are important they feed everything around us and they um, including our plants and um, it makes our our life rich in many ways fantastic um, so salmon have taken care of you and your ancestors since time immemorial um, how do you and, and your people take care of the salmon 
Well, um, it's very important to us to use every part of the salmon or as you use, use as much as that we, you know, we possibly can. We, we eat the heads, the, um, the whole entire bodies. There's different parts. We make heart soup, um, which is, which is really good. You should try, <laughs> try it. Um, we use them at all times of the year. I remember as a kid, we didn't have freezers. So we, we, you, we just, got salmon all summer long until well after they spawned out. And um, we, I remember baking them using that canned, uh, what is it, canned bacon and uh, putting it over the salmon because they just kind of lose their flavors. They, you know, their meat, meat turns white and um, baking them that way. So they would have a little bit of flavor, but they were still good. And, um, and also noodle vi, which is dried salmon, um, freeze dried salmon and you dip it in oil. But yeah, it's so important that you don't waste anything. Um, my mom, this summer, she hung all the backbones after we, we made salmon strips, she hung all the backbones for um, our sled dogs. So every part of the salmon is used. Fantastic. Um, so when the salmon return home, uh, you know, for the first time, like the first salmon that are coming in, is there, is there something special that you do with the first fish? And, and I guess before you even catch the first fish, um, what, what's it like, what's that time of year, you know, are you, are you anticipating, <laughs> are you looking forward to the salmon coming home? Yes, there's so much anticipation and everyone's communicating, everyone's talking uh, between villages, like, did, you know, did anybody get one yet? And when would we find out who... <laughs> who gets one usually igiagic at the mouth of the quijack and then we know like okay it's gonna be three days maybe till we get ours and um but when we get our first salmon it's it's a pretty big deal we um we share it we usually share it among our whole community our whole family um at Pope Fenoy, we share it among our, our everyone's that that is there so we make like a big uh, pot of uh, salmon chowder or something that we can share or we give pieces to everyone so everyone can have a taste of it and that's our way of uh, celebrating the first salmon coming in and and you know help us understand why why sharing is so important well <laughs> that that has been the way that um that the din Inna people or alaska native people have survived for thousands of years is that we're very um communal people and that um taking care of each other is very very important i mean thinking about the harsh environment of alaska um, and how tough it could have been at times, but you take care of each other and help each other. Um, it makes it so much easier. I mean, someone might have good luck one year and getting um, hunting or something um, and another person not, but you know, if you just, that's the way we take care of each other. And um, I think you once told me that like, before the salmon are coming, so in, in the spring, um, there's, there's something that you do with a, a, a specific plant Oh, yes, yes. So that's a uh, wild celery or what some people call it, pushki. Um, we, um, in the early spring, the, the wild celery of the grass come up and they, um, they have a peeling on them. They taste just like celery, but maybe a little bit stronger. And then they, you can peel them. Um, and cause that's kind of like the, it's a, a little pokey and it could cause a rash. So you have to peel off that part. And as you peel it, you throw the peelings into the the creek or the water and you talk to the salmon this is what my elders told me they said you put it into the water and you tell the salmon please come our people are starving we're eating plants and the you know the the peelings go down the stream into the um to the ocean where the salmon can smell the smell to come home so they they come along as you call them i mean they come along after you call them but that's the tradition that uh that uh, my elders taught me that's beautiful. Um, I, I think something else you told me, um, like before the salmon are, you know, coming, um, I, I, you know, I know you were just telling us like in the steam bath, like the plants that you use, like you can smell the salmon in the leaves, you know, after they've fertilized the, the soil and the ground. Um, but can you, when the salmon are coming, uh, but you haven't, you know, seen them yet, can you, I think you told me like you could kind of smell them in the air too. Oh, I definitely do. And some people say I have a strange, <laughs> like my nose is way too sensitive, but I feel like um, you can definitely smell them coming and, or I can. And then um, another thing that my mom often reminds me of is um, it's usually late June, we start getting like this uh, low fog on the water. Oh. And um, she calls that salmon weather. Um, she said, that means the salmon are coming. The fog is, um, you know, 
is telling us that the salmon are on their way. Great. Um, I just want to explore this idea a little bit more of, of salmon as family, because you, you've told me that, you know, that, that that's the salmon are your family. They are your relatives. Um, so what's it like, you know, for those of us who don't really live this way, what is it like to, to live with, with salmon as family? You know, they're, they're your relatives. Well, um, it's all about respect. This is, this is another thing that I've learned in my culture is that you respect everything um, and you treat it, um, you treat it the way you would treat your family or treat your, yourself. Um, and there are, there are proper ways of, of harvesting animals, plants, everything. And there's, you know, there's always, you always give uh, gratitude. Um, you always say thank you for what you have. Um, and it's, you know, I, I just really believe that salmon are a part of us because I mean, we, we eat salmon so much that I'm pretty sure it's part of our DNA. <laughs> um, but not, not just thinking about it being as food. Um, I grew up near the creek and I sat and I watched, and I know all of my siblings did the same thing. I sat and watched the salmon as they return. I, I watched them as they, you know, I, I see the babies lingering around um, when the salmon are young. Um, so it's, they're, I've watched them in every part of their life that I could, except for in the ocean. Um, and so it's, they're they're just part of um part of our um what am i trying to say just uh who we well our family <laughs> they're part of our family because we we hang out with them all the time we swim with them it's uh they're not separate from us it's uh they're more than just and they're so beautiful too like um we have a waterfall behind behind our place and um they're so striking when they turn red and um they're jumping and trying to get up the waterfall and we as kids we we would just go swimming with them and it was uh they were just our <laughs> our salmon buddies <laughs> oh that it, again beautiful it's such a very very special way of life that 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 you live um what what are your hopes for the future of uh for salmon and 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 your people and and for that salmon way of life that you that you live that's so rich well, I definitely um, hope that salmon continue to be um, strong all over Alaska. I know that it's um, there's a struggle in different parts of Alaska to um, for the the runs, but I I just hope that the salmon can stay strong. Um, I honestly think um, it would be great to do more studies on the whole life cycle of the salmon, and also um, understanding. Um, habitat protection because uh, you know there's there's a lot of things that that can harm um, the habitat and, and people think about the salmon when they're full grown because that's when they're they're so um, prominent and well noticed they're they're when we eat them um, but we have to think about them when they're babies as well um, Lake Iliamna at one at one given time have three years worth of salmon um, smolt in the in the in the lake at one time. So, I mean, thinking about that is, is really powerful. Like how, how many salmon we actually are um, um, nursing <laughs> in, our, in our little nursery. So I, I, I don't know, I just hope that in the future, the future of salmon, there's so much we still don't understand about them that we continue to study them and, the, and not just the, the adult part of their life, but the, um, the young part. I mean, the, the whole life cycle, but especially um, when they're younger too, and how our environment affects them. Great, all right. Well, let's take a look at uh, some of Michelle's beautiful salmon-inspired art. I'm just gonna show a few images here. Um, so if you can tell us a little bit about these. Oh, okay, so um, I, pan my own salmon um, and kind of mess around a little bit with the, <laughs> with the colors and the lighting. Um, the basket on the left is all sockeye salmon and I dyed the, um, I dyed the skin red to, to match the, um, the spawned out look because when you, when you actually, when I dye it or tan it, I mean, it, it kind of fades to a brown color. So I added a little bit of dye, but um, 
the left is a um, just leaves falling in the in the fall time and then the basket on the right actually has a pike and I believe that's a rainbow in it um, but it's that one's a fiddlehead fern which I I really love that pattern yeah these are just gorgeous I had no idea that that uh, that you could make baskets out of fish skin. Pretty, pretty amazing. <laughs> and so speaking of fish skin, so the, this next one here, uh, tell us what we're looking at. Okay, so these are um, salmon, uh, they, they're the mukluks. Uh, so traditionally we made waterproof um, mukluks out of salmon skin. And um, these are just like a, a earring replica of that. My one of my grandmothers, uh, my cheetahs and then Dalton made these and taught me how. So I, um, mine are, are not as well made as hers, but uh, <laughs> it's my version of it. Oh, these are gorgeous. Um, okay, and then what are we looking at here? So these are the cheekbones of the salmon and I like um, using the, the bones uh, for different types of earrings. And the only way you can actually, I can actually harvest the, the um, bones from the salmon is after the bears harvest salmon and leave the bones along the, the um, riverbanks. I pick them and uh, clean them off uh, to make the earrings. And there's different parts of the, of the um, head that I use. This is the cheekbones. And I have another version that makes um, a butterfly. If you get the jawbone, the upper, or the, yeah, it's the upper jawbone too, to make the butterflies. But these, uh, these are a lot of fun to make and they're kind of hard, hard to find because you have to find the pair and you, you don't necessarily always find the, the other side of the cheekbone um, in one pile. So it's just gathering and then matching them up and a lot of cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are, to me, these are just stunning. Uh, okay, and our final one. <laughs> and this is a, um, a salmon inspired necklace. My uncle, uh, designed the, um, the, the pendant. And then the necklace is actually made with dentali dentalium shells, which is a traditional um, bead that we use. It's actually a mollusk that was uh, harvested. Um, my ancestor or my elders tell me that it was harvested up in the lakes in the Northern part of uh, like Lake Clark National Park. Um, but they were considered to be very, very, um, expensive as you as you trade um, trade. So if the more dentalium you wore, the more important or rich you you are. And this necklace also has salmon leather in it as well. Um, but I love using dentalium because it's um, such it's a traditional a traditional um, well I'll say bee, but it was actually a, a shell. So yeah. No, I'm just again I, your work is stunning. And I and I can now understand and see um, where you get your inspiration. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to uh, turn it back over to Elizabeth. Great, thanks Amy. And thank you so much, Michelle, just for taking us into your home and sharing your home and your family of salmon with us too. Just so truly beautiful and, in, and inspiring in a lot of ways. Um, well, we're gonna just kind of wrap it up quickly here. If you haven't done so yet, um, just invite you to share where is your home stream and where it's located in the chat. And, and thanks to all of you who have done so already. It's really fun to see just sort of all, of, all over the map um, where people consider it to be their, their home stream. So continue to add that in the chat. Um, we'll be compiling a little map that we'll share with you all afterwards and can kind of see what, what everyone's identified collectively. Um, and I also invite you to consider signing Salmon State's recent um, pledge that is on our website. I think we're gonna put the link in the chat here. There it is. Um, and really it's just sort of recognizing and honoring some of the things that Michelle touched on in her remarks just about, you know, when we think about the future of wild salmon and the future of Alaska, which really is a, a salmon state and, you know, people who are, still have relationships with wild salmon, just different ways that we can all help uh, help uphold our end of that relationship that we have with wild salmon. So we invite you to sign that pledge, encourage others to do so as well. Um, we'll send you updates about specific ways you can take action, be part of some of our um, campaigns such as 
you know, are working to protect Bristol Bay salmon habitat and, and stopping the proposed pebble mine or in Southeast Alaska, where we have transboundary mines. So just a good way to get updates on, about ways to stay involved and, and be a wild salmon steward. Um, and so with that, we're going to just close with our raffle winners. So we've got some three fun salmon inspired prizes um, to give away. And we've just randomly selected three names from people who pre registered um, to attend today. So our first prize <laughs> is a signed copy of the Salmon Way by Amy. Um, and Amy, if you could tell us our first lucky winner. Yes, uh, the winner of the book is Linda Barnes. Okay, and I should add, we will reach out to each of the winners afterwards, and we'll figure out how to get you your prize. Um, our next prize is a signed copy of um, cookbook author Hank Shaw's newest cookbook called Hook, Line, and Supper. Super, super awesome. You should check out his other cookbooks if you're not familiar. Um, Hank does incredible work with Wild Fish and Game um so the winner of this prize is uh the winner of the cookbook is tara ling okay and then our final prize um just in time for the cozy fall and winter season we have a salmon state hoodie super soft and warm and the the winner of this prize uh winner of that wonderful hoodie uh jack cunningham Okay, awesome. So we'll be in touch with our winners directly. Um, thanks to all of you for joining us during your busy day. And um, we will be posting this online afterwards so you can rewatch it or share it with others. But um, yeah, thanks for being here and helping us celebrate the Salmon Way. So we'll be in touch and take care. Love salmon cause it tastes real good Love salmon it's a real good food Catch salmon with my family Then we cook up a salmon feed And I grew up that way And I hope the salmon will stay Cause I grew up that way Love fishing in the cool, clear creek. Love squishing the mud in my feet. Smoke salmon with my family. Share the love, it's a real good treat. Cause I grew up that way. And I hope salmon will stay. Cause I grew up that way.